and we welcome you inside the Q30 Sports post game show alongside Chris Dacey. I'm Brian Schwartz. It's a Friday night in Hamden. Two games at the People's United Center. First, it was the Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team, and then it was the Quinnipiac men's basketball team. Chris, a resident men's basketball beat reporter, we're going to get started there. The later game where Quinnipiac fell to Marist, 63 to 61. Yeah, um, tight, tight game, or it was a tight game late again. Like Quinnipiac always seems to get into tight games late, and um, just the Marist defense that stood out to me. They were they were suffocating all over, never really giving Quinnipiac a wide open shot. It was pretty impressive. You know, uh, Coach Dunn down or up there or down there in Maris, excuse me, brought his defensive tendencies over from St. Peter's and shown why he's one of the best defensively as a coach. Yeah, Maris is at the bottom of the MAC standings, and they did not look at it tonight. Let's check out the highlights there from the People's United Center. Quinnipiac and Marist getting underway on this Friday night, right after the women's hockey game. We had a nice crowd there tonight. Yeah, Chris. big crowd. First Almost half, 2,000. Jacob Rioni, the long three. That was only the, those, those, those long threes were some of the sh only shots they were able to get off. Cam Young, a little spin, another jumper. He hits a three. Cam Young had 24 tonight. There's Brian Parker on Maris, the little roller. And Maris, Maris was really hitting the shots oh, yeah. today. I mean, goes there. But there's Boondu, gets the layup. Incredible then he would shot. convert the three-point play Incredible. there. He had a pretty good game. Here's Rich Kelly driving in, kicks it back out. Jacob Rigoni with a long three. Another deep three. Those are just unguardable just because of the depth he was getting. And those are the shots that Quinnipiac had to take because they're the only one open. Second half now, here's Cam Young trying to get inside, puts Tough it two. up and gets Tough it two. in. Now here's Maris coming back the other way, gets a layup to fall. They had a pretty good lead throughout was, the, the entirety of the second half. That was a big half. bucket, put them up by 10, and then this seemed to... The threes at the end here seem to put Quinnipiac away, but again, they have the player for dramatic, and we'll, we'll see late here. There's the dagger there. Marist would go ahead, and the, even though Quinnipiac came back a little bit at the end of this game, as you can see here with the Bobcats, they just could not complete the game. Rich Kelly hit this three, but then Marist came back the other way. Quinnipiac fouled him. They missed the free throw on purpose, and it just wasn't enough. And Baker Dunleavy talked post game, so let's check that out after a 63 to 61 loss to Marist. Yeah, I mean, tough one for us. Obviously, I think the majority of that game was dominated by Marist's defensive effort and connectedness. So they were really good on that side, limiting us to um, you know the percentage that we shot. I don't think it was just us missing open shots. I think it was them really, uh, really playing a hard, tough brand of defense. And, and uh, credit to them on that. As always, proud of the way we fought down the stretch. Not much for Baker Dunleavy to say after this game. It wasn't, wasn't the best of performances for Quinnipiac. Obviously, you want to beat a team like Maris, who's at the bottom of the conference. And the contributions from Quinnipiac really only came from the starting lineup tonight. And I think that was one of the reasons why they weren't successful in this game. Yeah, I say the starting lineup. It only looked like it was mostly from two players. That was Cam Young and Jacob Rigoni. They were getting it. They were getting their shots to fall from deep beyond the three-point line. Like I said, those were some of the only shots they were able to get wide open looks from. But again, off the like, Rich Kelly had six points, but they were two threes at the end of the game. He was struggling all game, and then Tyrese Williams also had five turnovers. So yeah, most of their production did come from the starting five, but it was only those two players of Young and Rigoni, and then their bench. Bench played pretty poorly today, if you ask me. Only seven total points compared to Maris scoring 40, their bench. It, it was just not what you wanted, especially you had Aaron Robinson hitting a three and then Travis Adsman for four. Nothing for Marfo in the 11 minutes he played. Five rebounds, which isn't terrible. What you want to see him get on the scoring card, especially with his height and his ability down low. It was just a little frustrating for Quinnipiac. Yeah, I think you need to see more from Kevin Marfo. Even Tyree Pickron did not contribute on the score sheet as well tonight. All right. They seemed to really pick it up late in the game, though. They did it against Ryder, and that's how they came back yes. and ended up winning in overtime. And tonight, they seemed to pick it up later in the game. They only scored 21 in the first half. Yeah. They scored 40 in the second yeah. half, and it was Rich Kelly and Cam Young who yeah. really picked it up at the end. We asked Baker about that after the game, too, and it says he says it's the sense of urgency his team has. And it seems that, like they always have that. It's only like the last 10 or so minutes. Um, and it's not only this game, obviously it happened in the Ryder game, it happened in the, the Monmouth game that was here at Quinnipiac, when, except it was Monmouth going the other way, they had the sense of urgency going late. It's something about this team in late games, when they have to lead, they seem to, they, they, they seem to you know, like, like take a step back or 
and you know not play as aggressively as they were. But then maybe if they're down, they start they have that sense of urgency kicks in and they'll they'll start playing. And like uh, Baker Dunleavy said, you have to get a little lucky. You have to have some some balls roll your way. You have to grab some loose balls. You have to have some calls go your way. Like we had the. The goaltending call against Tyrese Williams not go their way it was an iffy call. We really, we really didn't get a good look at it from where we were sitting, but Baker Dunleavy wanted them to take another look, which they did, and didn't get the call overturned. But like I said, you can have these comebacks, and they have them every game. Even some other teams have it against them. It's just that you have to get lucky. Quinnipiac didn't get lucky against a team they should have beaten in Marist at the bottom of the conference today. Well, they got Iona on Tuesday coming to Hamden. They'll need a kind of pick it up earlier in the game so exactly. that they don't get behind and have to really shoot back Iona's at the a good end. team. They're always a, a favor going into the tournament. It should be a good game. They just beat Iona at Iona the first time Baker Dunleavy has beat Iona since two years here, so it should be an interesting game. Quinnipiac right now is ahead of Iona in the standings. They had a chance to take first place but in the MAC, but Quinnipiac losing tonight, obviously. Knocked them back a little bit. Canisius has sole possession of first place at 9-4 and four in the conference. Monmouth at 9-5 and five after the loss to Ryder tonight. And Quinnipiac and Siena tied at eight and five. It seems like a perfect opportunity for them. Sorry, I had to cut this. It seemed like a perfect opportunity for them at least to get a share of first place with the last place team coming onto their home court. And you think they'd get it done, but unfortunately it didn't. It was a perfect situation for them with the Monmouth loss, and they lost the chance. They did. Chris Dacey, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, now we'll send it to Katie O'Keefe with the out of town update. Quinnipiac men's hockey and women's basketball are on the road. Katie. Thanks, Brian. And while there was a crazy game here in Hamden with the men's basketball team, the men's ice hockey team traveled away to nationally ranked Union. There was no scoring in the first period, but you see here at the full screen on your screen right now, it was a tie game, a goal apiece, even after a five-minute overtime. The first goal of the game was a QU goal by Wyatt Bongiovanni. It was his 11th goal of the season. Union scored in the second period shortly thereafter. Quinnipiac, the goal was under review. Quinnipiac challenged it, but... Um, the refs kept their original call, so it was a tie. And now with this tie, Union ranks at 21 and QU at 6 in the pairwise rankings. And as for the women's team, we go from Union to Manhattan. The women's team traveled there. Manhattan was ranked 8th in the MAC coming into this. Quinnipiac obviously in 1st. 13-0 in the MAC after this game. And what's important to note here is that Jen Fay, she made her appearance after having an injury coming after during winter break play. Uh, she hurt herself in the Siena game January 25th, but you see here she played a good 13 minutes, nine points. Paige Warfell, she contributed a lot this game with six points, eight rebounds, and three assists. And the Manhattan Jasters clearly couldn't keep up. And even post game, the Manhattan ho head coach said, I'm just disappointed we didn't challenge them more. They're a great team with a lot of junior and senior talent, but we can only learn from this. And then she commented and said that Quinnipiac plays a championship effort on every play. And that's what's really important for this team. And it might be hard to keep track at this point, but this team it now has 44 straight conference wins. And what you really need to know is that this team is unstoppable. So be on the lookout for them in their postseason and in the NCAA tournament. Brian, that's all I have. Back to you. 13-0 in conference, that women's basketball team. Can't stop them. We welcome in now Ryan Flaherty, our Quinnipiac women's ice hockey beat reporter. Ryan, how are you? Good. Great to be here. Great to be here, too. So, Quinnipiac women's ice hockey gets a 4 nothing win tonight. Your thoughts? Uh, this was the biggest win of their season by far, Brian. Uh, they, it was plain and simple. They had to go out and get two points tonight and put themselves in the driver's seat for that eighth seed, eighth seed in the playoffs, and that's exactly what they did. Let's check out the action here, Quinnipiac. Take it on RPI from the People's United Center. On the other side, this was the early game at 6 o'clock. On the ice, Abby Ives in goal for the Bobcats. There's Melissa Samuskevich. You're going to hear more about her as we check out this game. Let's go to the first period. We'll start it off with Melissa Samuskevich getting the pass and curling around the circle, putting that glove side. Could it be back up 1-0 less than four minutes in? Yeah, her first goal in over a month, a huge goal for her, a huge breakthrough for this team. Taylor House now finding Kutuga Boo. Could it be back up 2-0? Second line is huge. That secondary scoring has been key for this team as of late. Now let's go to the third quarter where we'll check out more from that goaltender, Abby Ives. She had a great game tonight. This was just one of her 14 saves on the evening. Can't say enough good things about what Abby Ives is doing, especially with the goaltending situation right now in Hamden. She has really put this team on her back, and she's going to be crucial in the playoffs. Two goals for Samuskevich, 
and Quinnipiac's win, a big win for the Bobcats. How important was this win tonight? I know they've, they've had points in three straight games. Well, like I said, this win was huge. Uh, they put themselves, they have a four-point cushion in that A seed. Yale loses tonight. Uh, a tough stretch for Yale. To, they're at Colgate tonight. They're at Cornell, two of the best teams in a loaded ECAC conference. Quinnipiac goes out, beats an RPI team that is better than them. Of, above them in the standings, they have a union team who is in last place tomorrow. So they are four points clear of a playoff spot with three games to play. Basically, tomorrow on senior day, they win and they're in the playoffs. What is the key to making a playoff run? Obviously, they can. What is the key? Well, I think right now it's the offense. The, this Cassandra Turner has talked so much about their defense and their style of play and how they want to play is defensively. But over the last month, we have seen a whole new Quinnipiac Bobcats team and its offense. Uh, the assistant coach, uh, Amanda Mazoda, has done worked wonders uh, for this team. Cass Turner really uh, has admired her all season. She talked about it in the postgame tonight how well uh, she knows how she was a former goalie. She knows how people score. And she's done a phenomenal job. Quinnipiac has scored 16 goals in their last five games. Uh, they goals average around two, and uh, now it's around four in the last four games. So the offense is just really key for this team right now. Quickly, do you think they make the playoffs? I do. Uh, like I said, Union is the at the bottom of the conference. It's senior day, so you know uh, the team is going to be fired up. They have points in their last three games. They want to send their seniors out in their last home game with a win. And uh, this team is, is certainly not done. They talked about it in the post game. They're not fighting for the AC. They think they can win a conference championship, and uh, it's certainly going to be interesting to see if they can follow through on that. What's the player to watch over these next few games? I think it's Sam Miskevich. Um, you know, like I said, she's had a, plenty of assists in the last month, but hasn't scored, and she is the heart and soul of this team. She does so many things well, but when she's scoring, she is the catalyst for this offense. Um, so as the offense improves, and if she starts to score, I think that could be really dangerous. We look at the three stars from tonight's game. Kenzie Lancaster, Grace Markey, and Melissa Samuskevich. All the key players in tonight's game. Who had the biggest impact? Uh, you know, I keep saying it, Samuskevich, but it's pretty obvious. Two goals, five shots, uh, a plus two. Really the, the leader of this team. Melissa Samuskevich and the Bobcats. They have another game tomorrow at 3 o'clock. From the People's United Center, he's Ryan Flaherty. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we want to thank everybody behind the scenes for staying with us on this late Friday evening in Hamden. For everyone behind the scenes and for everyone on camera, I'm Brian Schwartz. And we'll see you next time. Check out all our content at Q30TV.com and at Q30Sports on Twitter. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening.